Avatar Mayor Baba PJ. Hmm. <clears throat> so you're welcome to unmute when you want to say something. What I thought I would do is start with um, a, a, a nice video of Mara back in the um, early 30s when, uh, well, she's talking about those times. It was taken uh, um, <clears throat> in 1977 by David Fenster, bless him, who recorded, uh, he took many videos. It's such a tre treasure um, there on YouTube. You Google Mayor Baba or you Google Mayor of Irani. You get lovely, lovely videos. So, um, this one is, is Mara talking about the early days and like the Prem Ashram time, early 30s at, um, at, at Maribah. Okay, let me see if I can do this right. Um, let's see. Am I, is this on? No. Are you seeing this? It's very soon. Yes, soon see after see see Baba observed silence, he used to come up alone uh, to be in seclusion in this room. Uh, that time nobody used to come to the, to, uh, to on the hill, uh, and Baba was first. And so he used to come for seclusion, and we used to watch him from down the hill because we were staying down the hill. That was 1925, 1925. And so, um, Baba, when climbing up the hill, you know, uh, we would be talking a bit loud, excitedly that oh, Baba's going up the hill, and we would be calling each other, so Baba, hear our voices. So, coming up the hill, after it crossed the railway lines, he would turn down to see. Uh, where the, uh, the talking sound of talking comes in. So he saw us girls uh, looking at him, you know, uh, from our compound. So we, we saw Baba looking at us, so we waved to Baba. And so Baba turned around and waved also. And then Baba start, uh, started to walk again. And then he walked a little distance and turned around to see, and we were still waving. And so Baba also waved. and. Uh, and so then Baba came right on the top of the hill, you know. From there he turned to see, we were still there, so Baba waved and we also waved to Baba. So then, uh, then Baba came and there were steps, I don't know what kind of ladder, I thought that it was an iron ladder, but the real thing I don't know. But he was climbing the steps from outside. There was no door to this room because it was supposed to be a tank, water uh, uh, storage for the military in the time of First World War. So Baba came up from the from high um, what do you call this high window, but that window was not that short. It was it was like a door that big. It was a biggish window there, and uh, Baba stood on the top of the stairs and Baba turned down and from there also Baba waved and we waved and then Baba did this means that's sort of it's enough so <laughs> he wants to come in and so then we knew Baba would, and Baba would come in and Baba was in seclusion and how long how many hours that I don't know because when Baba came down that didn't see when he came down but that he used to for some days and the detail of that um, Padri, Padri would know because they kept diary, we didn't kept, keep a diary. And so that was the time we first saw Baba come up the hill and the hill being used. And then later on in uh, 19, end of 1926, I think, and uh, some part of 27 or so, it was Prem Ashram and Baba was in seclusion in the same room that is Baba Samadhi now. Baba did not step out, he was observing silence and doing universal work as well as he was fasting. Um, so that was kind of a strain on Baba, but he did not step out of the room, and the room was so tiny, small, one would feel cooped up in it, you know, still, and not to 
and to observe silence and just do his work, you know. Then after some time, Baba gave audience to his, uh, see the Prem Ashram boys, after a certain period of his work was finished with fast and all that, he, Baba had told me before leaving for Prem Ashram down the hill, Baba told me to send him uh, a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, and to see that uh, my fingers are clean, that they don't know smell of garlic and onion, and um, so as to keep his, the flask clean and wash myself and so on. So Baba was that time in Samadhi room uh, in seclusion and uh, he was fast and work. And then Baba is to have the Prem Ashram boys to talk to them of, uh, of uh, spiritual matter. That was it. Then one time Baba, I think it was, a little before Baba's birthday came, uh, he called us and Baba was out of his room. That is, he was not in seclusion that time. Baba took us around and brought us in this room to see the, the Prem Ashram children's room. So each little be bedding was there and each one had a little trunk at the head of the bedding, you know, each one's own belongings separate. And so it was very tidy and nice room. Baba showed us around, so and the kitchen was a um, temporary kitchen, it was not this kitchen. And for a short while we were with Baba, and then we went down. And then uh, uh, my birthday came, and that time uh, Baba was also on the seclu uh, I mean, the, on the uh, upper Mirabad, that is on the hill with the Premation boys. But Baba sent word that. Uh, we all must come for his darshan, and so on my birthday, we were allowed to come for Baba darshan. We were so happy, we had nice new saris on, and we were so happy to come up the hill to have Baba darshan. We were for about half an hour with Baba, anyway, we, we saw Baba, and we were all very happy. And then, after that, Baba's birthday in February, then that time we were told we can come up, and so we all came up. And they were singing Kawali, which Baba loved very, very much. And he was seated at the seated at the entrance of his samadhi room, you know, out uh, just against the door, near the door, like that. And the song, on one side, all the women, one side, the men, and so on. And that uh, twice we had to come in the night, uh, in the evening. Also, we came up in the afternoon, went down to eat, and again came up by the evening. And so twice we were with. Baba on the hill on Baba's birthday, that was it. And then after the Prem Ashram was, um, I mean, Baba was, uh, how would you say, that phase of his work, and so Baba came down the hill, was seated in the rickshaw, and the uh, Prem Ashram boys, and sometimes the Mandali, they would uh, uh, pull the rickshaw, and Baba used to come down, and Baba looked very beautiful in the rickshaw. Baba's hair, lovely hair open, and his, he had the dark coat, you know, comely coat on that time. And so, that was pretty much from time. And then Baba used to come down the hill, and he told us that um, uh, we were going to Toka, and in Toka also we were there. I'll stop it there, let's see. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, this, I, though these videos are so, gosh, um, such a treasure. Um, and you know, what struck me, about, uh, what I remembered about her, she, uh, she was like, she was reliving these experiences. She would close her eyes and just uh, every little detail, every, every little, she'd remember where he was sitting and how he was sitting and just phenomenal. She was so attentive. Um, so I recommend going there and looking at them. They're, they're amazing. Um, no, this, this video is just a little out of focus. It, it was in 77. David Fenster took them. Um, so I thought, you know, um, I thought I would, <laughs> I, I looked for inspiring videos and, and 
I was so taken, Ruthie, with your beautiful slideshow that I'm going to play it again here. It's it, uh, um, and and then we'll go into sharing. Um, so okay, let me do this again. Share. Hope that so. Ruthie gets all credit. She did well, and Cindy and Jamie Newell too. They did a beautiful job. Uh, let's see now. Da -da. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. Um. I think of dear Meryl with the past in her eyes Reliving the days she spent by the side Of Baba, her love and her life This was never a worldly romance Not what one might assume at a glance But pure and divine as an angel dance between hearts entwined and entranced she was the moon sharing his light she lit up the path in the dark of the night she was the chosen beloved one she was the wondrous moon reflecting the flow Together they made the most beautiful sight When he looked at her, he shone ever more bright The sun lit the day and the moon lit the night As she reflected his light She was the heart of his infinite plan she
mirror in what manner do you love him your hold on to him is so strong we who have just come to know him it is for this love that we long for of all of his lovers in creation it seems that he's closest to you so Mara won't you tell us how you love him so that we might love him that way too well he came as if an angel sent from heaven but we found it rather odd to learn that this angel sent from heaven himself had turned out to be God and a simple heart breaks when one thinks of mistakes made in a moment so weak and so faced with this task we now come to ask help towards this goal that we see so tell us Mara in what manner do you love him and what makes your love so pure that there is no hardship or suffering for him that you would not endure we who have never been with him still long for a love so true so Mara won't you tell us how you love him so that we might love him that way too There's a mist on the field in the morning But the sun comes to burn it all off Just as the mist of our clouded imaginations Is removed by the warmth of his love And we see all around His love shining down direct from the heavens above and we grow close but yet as close as we get we never can get close enough so tell us Mara in what manner do you love him though really it's not hard to tell for we see it when you look at his picture Your eyes seem to show us so well And though it might be rude of us asking Really what else could we do? For Mara, if we knew how you love him Then we I'd love him that way too.
Such a beautiful slideshow, Ruthie. <clears throat> um, I thought I would read just a little bit from David Fenster from uh, Mehera Meher about the day of her passing. Um, May 1989, Mera's body is lying in state at Merizad inside Mandali Hall before being taken on its final journey to Meribad. My wife, Sheila, keeps fidgeting, looking from side to side around the hall. She leans over and whispers conspiratorially to her brother. He nods in agreement. I wonder what's going on. Later, Sheila, who had grown up in Meribaba's physical proximity, explained, Baba was there, she stated, in Mondali Hall. We felt his presence. Then it hit me. I had felt it too, of course. A surcharged atmosphere in the hall that night. But this is how I always felt in Mara's presence. Just a sec. I'm not why. Not quite sure what's happening with <laughs> the video here. Anyway. Uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I had felt it too, of course, a surcharged atmosphere in the hall that night. But this is how I always felt in Mara's presence. Every time as I sat on Mara's porch, the feeling was the same. A joy, a happiness in my heart to be in her presence. I had assumed that it was Mara who was responsible for it. Now I realized it was Mary Baba's actual presence. I had been feeling all those years emanating not from her, but from him. And I was consoled. I now knew. I never met Mary Baba, but I had been in his presence. I had felt his presence. Whenever anyone expressed loving sentiments toward her, Mara always asserted, Baba, it is your love that's coming through. I now understood what she meant. So now, um, now uh, I'm going to open it, share it up, open the meeting up to folks to share. I hope you will um, take this opportunity to. Um, to, uh, to share, share your experiences or thoughts. <clears throat> uh, so, I, let's see. Some of you might not know how to raise hands. Hmm. I'm puzzled why this, this screen just kind of stuck on one person. Audience, <laughs> we're glad you're here, but but everybody should be showing up and I'm not sure why. Um. <clears throat> ah. Okay, so let me, uh, if you if you have something, oh, Diana, okay. Let, I'll explain if you have something to share. Uh, the easiest way is to go to the reactions button, uh, push it and then you'll get raise hand. Um, Otherwise, you, uh, uh, you know, I'll put the instructions in the, in the chat while Diana shares. Okay, Diana. Jay Baba, to you all, I'm going to be reading from Lives of Love, the Women Mandali of Avatar Meher Baba, written by Judith Garbett. And this is her impression and recollection of Mara. Mara always looked so nice. She was of medium height, had a neat figure, graceful hands and small slim feet. Her skin was fair and she wore her dark, softly waving hair in a very simple style which suited her. The length finishing low on her neck and lightly caught back with a pin or two. Her eyes were beautiful, so alive and very expressive of all moods. For special occasions, she always wore bright saris, 
but her regular dress at Marizade was an ankle length skirt and fitted over blouse with sleeves to the elbow, usually made of attractive cotton fabrics in prints and toning plain colors. Green, she once mentioned, was her favorite color, but she also looked sweet in various shades of mauves, blues, or pinks. Generally, she wore flat, easy to slip into footwear, some made of a dark red crushed velvet material, which went well with her long skirts when she was in the house or on the porch. Mara walked quickly with lithe and graceful movements, whether she was inside or outside, and one had to be alert to keep pace with her. When going from the main house to Mondeley Hall through the garden, she always used a small black cotton umbrella as protection from the sun. But at Maribad, when she was carrying garlands to offer to Baba in the Samadhi, one of the Western women residents walked close behind to hold the umbrella over her. Over the years, Mara's changes of mood could be discerned now and then by those with her on the porch. During the early 70s, when it was still so soon after Baba had left his physical form, sometimes Mara would not seem to be in very good health, looking so drawn and remote that some even wondered whether they would see her again. But of course, she always rallied. And naturally, there were occasions when she appeared more tired than usual and then chatted only about everyday things with not so many Baba stories. But in the late 70s and through the 80s, there were many, many occasions when she seemed very bright, very relaxed, talked easily, told delightful stories, and laughed quite a lot. Yet, underlying it all in her last years, it was also apparent that she was gradually, gently, almost imperceptibly becoming more quietly withdrawn, more and more absorbed in thoughts of her beloved, constantly longing for his call to join him forever. J. Baba. Jeff, would this be a good time for you to tell your your amazing story of that day? Are you there, Jeff? I think you've all heard it last <clears throat> some days back, but I will <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll share it again. <clears throat> it was um, I was in India at Maribad, you know, doing some work there from mid-March to June and, you know, working away. And word came that the women Mondali <clears throat> were going to go, be going to Pune for their three weeks vacation that they took every year. And they sent word that if we wanted to come by and to Marizad and say goodbye to the women Mondali, and we could <clears throat> uh, see them before they went. So some people had already gone out there, and there were a few of us that came in the afternoon. Mara was on her porch, uh, sitting in the chair on the in the main house, and the women Mondali were uh, around her, and you know we greeted her and the you know and wished them the you know wonderful vacation, and and I as I said before whenever Mara would look at me, what I experienced is that those love glances that she had would just fill my whole body with a glow. <clears throat> and so I didn't know that she was as ill as she was. I mean, it, it, we weren't, uh, I wasn't told that. I just, and I didn't see her as being ill. She was there and so full of love. So I didn't notice. <clears throat> So then I went, uh, Mayru gave me some work to do for about three weeks there at Marizad. And at, after three weeks, I went back to Maribad, resumed the work there, and the women came back. And so I was there some days later. I have no idea whether it was a week later, but I was uh, there at the staff quarters. And 
after lunch and suddenly this car comes racing in there and it's Joel, I mean, um, Joel Dastur and he yells out, Mira's gone to Baba, Mira's gone to Baba and turns around and races off. And I mean, I came out on the veranda on the porch there and I was just like, oh my God, it was just shocking. I had no idea. And, you know, Mara had been so loving toward me all the years. And uh, so anyway, and I should tell you that this was the summer months. So there weren't, there were practically nobody at Maribah. This is after the pilgrim season, very hot. The weather was extremely hot. There were only two of us that were there temporarily. I think it was Tom Fortson and myself, and then some of the resident uh, Westerners, and Jal and Dolly, people like that. <clears throat> and so we kind of got together and we had to kind of divide up what had to be done because the next day, then uh, hundreds and hundreds of people were gonna be descending upon Maribad for Mara's funeral. <laughs> and so uh, naturally, uh, Alan Wagner was going to be in charge of the food. Uh, Ted Judson was up on the hill trying to make arrangements. And they asked me <clears throat> to kind of prepare Mara's grave. And uh, when I got there, the village workers had dug out the pit and everything, but it was just kind of, you know, needed to be straightened out and needed and everything, made nice. And so I worked there all afternoon part of what I had to do the the at the bottom of the the pit was not was uneven so I had to work so that if when the coffin came down it would be level so I was there all afternoon and then word came from Mara Zod that we could go out and see Mara uh, see her body and so <clears throat> uh, so there were some had gone earlier in the day and there were three of us I think it was Tom Fordson. It might have been, um, it might have been uh, Bob Street. I can't remember the third one, but we got on these huge motorcycles. I mean, enormous contraption of metal. <clears throat> and so we headed out to Marizad as the sun was setting and a full moon was coming up in the east. And for the most of our trip across the countryside through the town into the countryside, we were heading right toward the moon <clears throat> until we got close to Marizad. And there's a place on the highway where you can see Seclusion Hill from a distance. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when we were out in that area, I could feel this peace and serenity covering the whole countryside. And I had the feeling that it was like, like going to Bethlehem on the early morning of Jesus' birth. It had that sacredness of it. Anyway, we turned off the road from uh, the Pimple Gown Village Road, and then uh, we headed down the approach road. And as we got closer, I felt that, I mean, the atmosphere was so rarefied, I thought I was going to dissolve, and this huge motorcycle were going to dissolve. It was very, it was, it was something else. Anyway, we parked outside the, the gate, and we went in. And when I stepped in, I was into Mondeley Hall. When I stepped in, I was shocked because Mara was there on the coffin, <clears throat> open coffin, right in front of Baba's chair. And she looked like a young woman that was just sleeping. She did not look like, you know, like she had passed on. She was, <clears throat> and, and we also, others had that same experience. <clears throat> I, I remember thinking that, the the year that came into me, I, she it felt like she was just 28 years old, you know, so peaceful, so restful. Like I say, she was just it was like she was just sleeping. And so we, there were just a few people there, and every once in a while, the women Mondali who were in grief would come in for a little bit, and they would go out, and we sang, we sang. Uh, I think it was Heather and uh, Erico started up singing, and, and uh, as I mentioned last time, <clears throat> they weren't the Baba songs, they were these love songs, these classic love songs of Johnny Mathis, and you are the promise kiss of springtime, all these beautiful love songs suddenly 
came alive like they were a tribute to the love of Baba and Mira. <clears throat> and so then I went back to Maribad, <clears throat> and the next day, hundreds of people started coming up the hill. <clears throat> Mira's body was brought on that Saba Mandap, that platform near the, the tomb, and you know, uh, I went up and paid my respects. Hundreds of people did. <clears throat> and while the, <clears throat> excuse me, while they were, uh, people were paying respects, I drifted over to the tomb. So I was kind of there, kind of waiting, uh, just to be, you know, near the tomb. And finally, <clears throat> I heard my, uh, after about an hour, I heard my name called, and I turned around, and Mara's coffin was coming <clears throat> right toward, uh, me and and they said Jeff get in the tomb, and so uh, I and and um, and David Fenster received the 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 <clears throat> coffin on the inside and set it down right before where you bow down, and so then I got up to uh, I made to leave the women Mondali came in and I started to leave and Mani said stay there, so. You know, I was there when they said the final prayers and RT, and I feel that Mani wanted me to to come back when I came back to uh, Myrtle Beach to share all of this with the people there. That's why. And then we carried the tomb, I mean the um, the coffin around and lowered it in the in the pit, and there were a couple of decorative ropes, and we s set it down lay it down. And then uh, Mani came up and she had some earth from that had been beside Baba's body and she cast it down on the coffin. And then I think the women Mandali started putting flowers down on the coffin. And, and then all the people who had brought flowers filled up. They filled up the whole pit up all the way up to the top. And then, then at a distance of about 75 feet, there was this, the mound that had, that of all the dirt that had come out of the pit, and uh, Baba's twin nephews had. Uh, <clears throat> they began. They began this chant, and two lines spontaneously formed. And they took these buckets called gamala, and they fill, would fill them up, and they would pass them down. There were maybe 75 people on each side, and the gamalas were the buckets were passed all the way down, and we poured it into the the pit and then the, the bucket would be given to the other other you know the other line and it would go the, all the way back up so uh, while this chant was going on in which everybody was taking part all of the you know all of the earth came and eventually filled up the grave and there was a mound and flowers were put on it and but when i was there i I had the feeling that I was witnessing one of the, you know, one of the cosmic event of the beloved of the beloved in this in this advent was being lowered into the grave, and I and I was aware I only had a keyhole awareness on this. I knew that I didn't have the magnitude of awareness to take this all in. And then people went into the tomb and uh, paid their respects there. And many of them said that they would. There was a photograph of Baba at the back of the tomb, and it would the the photograph would be the Baba's photograph would be there. Then it would change to Mara's face, and then Baba's face, and Mara's face, and and Baba's face. So it was, you know, so clear that she had rejoined Baba. And uh, so I have a song to sing, and then, <clears throat> but it was something, a very large thing that I unfortunately was not large enough to take in completely. <clears throat> so this song, and Nan is going to play the guitar. Baba put you there. It was meant to be. <laughs> That's great that you can yeah. tell. Yeah. The, the, Oh, yeah, just a second. Now, this song... <coughs> that, 
that's just the warm-up of my voice there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, just a second here. Okay. Now, uh, just to give you an introduction to this, <clears throat> this is, uh, the first two verses are like Mara uh, remembering her early years at Lower Meribah with Baba while he was still speaking, when it was very intimate, back in the early 20s, something like that. And then, uh, then the last verse is her at, thinking of Baba after he had dropped his body. So one second here. Sorry about this, I'm folks. Just the music down there for me. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Evenings in autumn, the glowing fire lights up your face in orange and gold. I see your sweet smile shine through the darkness. Its lines are etched in my memory So I'd know you by heart I'd know you by heart Mornings in springtime Sharing love's secrets We'd walk until the morning was gone. We were like sweethearts, happy for hours. The love you gave me lives on and on. Cause I know you by heart. I still hear your voice on cool monsoon nights, whispering like the wind. Oh, In winter, the leaves were turning. I gazed on sunsets of orange and gold. I see your sweet smile. I hear you singing. You're still here beside me every day cause I know you by heart cause I know you by heart Beautiful, thank you. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, I didn't hear. Did you write it, Jeff? Or did? No, it's a song. I don't know who wrote it, Diana but it was a song. A song by, and uh, that's sung by Eva Cassidy. Oh. Shortly before she passed on. Oh. Eva did. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Mikal is next. Over the town, Mel Baba and Bill now. 
teaching and their love. Thank you, Jeff. That was very profound. And I heard it next second time and it's just uh, the same. And it describes the whole thing and brings the picture of what you were so fortunate to be there and see and you pass it on uh, so well. So I could see everything. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Very precious. So I've seen this, um, actually, I was very fortunate to meet Mera um, uh, twice, or maybe three times. And um, yeah, maybe three times uh, to spend time with her and Baba's birthday and Amartiti and um, on the terrace and in a tea. And um, she saw through me the moment she saw me and um, it was very clear <laughs> and she just captured my heart and I knew that she was completely God with one in oneness with Baba completely. And just beautiful to carry her in the heart and have her in my life all the time. Um, of course, Baba is first and foremost. Um, Tamara is there also and so is Bauji. So I'll sing a song uh, that I wrote for her birthday um, in, in, in uh, 2018. <laughs> Merabavateno nishmatapo ahavato Anaizi lanuleho et baba od ve od Yafat vatsilit snua vadina Kol kulecha va elohit lemeher bahava Yafat vatsilit snua vadina Kol kulecha v'eloik lemeher ba'ba Mera de Apollo v'zayit Baba's very beloved's love Please help us love Baba more and more and more Mera de Apollo v'zayit Baba's very beloved's love Please help us love Baba more and more and more you are beautiful and sublime, so humble and so gentle. You are pure, divine love for me, Baba. You are beautiful and sublime, so humble and so gentle. You are pure, divine love for me, Baba. Merabavateno nishmatapo ahavato Anaizi lanuleho ved baba od ba'od Merabavateno nishmatapo ahavato Anaizi lanuleho ved baba od ba'od Ve'od ve'od yoteo Oh, Baba Tao, Mio Baba, and dear Mera in their beauty and love together. Jay Baba. Wonderful song, Mikal, just so full of hope and life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank now you. we have Dana. <clears throat> well, Everybody knows, I think everyone here knows the story of Baba's face on the tree. But Meru told me a little backstory that you might not know about that tree, which is during Baba's physical lifetime. He was showing someone, he was showing someone that Mera asked him to show the garden. And because he had a he had one of the men Mundley with him, she was Mera was watching but sort of from behind the curtain in her room as Baba passed through the garden and passed behind her bed where the, of course that tree is. And she saw him put his hand on the tree 
and say, I like this tree. And then he showed the person, I think it was maybe an Australian person, he was showing the garden at Mara's behest and the scene ended and, but Mara wondered, why did Baba like that tree? It's not a particularly beautiful tree. There's so many better looking trees in the garden. And why did he pick that tree and say he liked that? So she asked him, she said, Baba, why, why do you like that tree? It's, it's not really the most beautiful tree in the garden. And he said, he gestured, one day you'll come to know. <laughs> so maybe you've heard that story before, but I hadn't heard it for so long, but Meru told me that. Such a beautiful. beautiful. So who knows? I don't know that he put his hand on that spot on the tree, but one can imagine that that's where his hand went. There's another story um, that I could tell. Let's see if I can tell it. About the first story I heard Mara tell when I first came to India in 1972 at the tea table. This is the first thing I remember her talking about. It was a story about a Baba lover who'd been challenged by a non-Baba lover to prove to this man that Mayor Baba was God. And this man was an intellectual he was, I think, what was called a kirtan kali, somebody who sings kirtans that that talk that sing about Krishna. But he was also he was a professor and he was highly educated. And the Baba lover was none of those things. And the Baba lover thought, I'll never be able to go up against this man of such high intellect. And but Mara said, but because he was a Baba lover, he accepted the challenge. So that always stuck with me. So anyway, the Baba lover did his best to tell the man about Baba and the man did all his kirtans and all his intellectual proof and everything. And the Baba lover felt he'd failed terribly at the end of it. He thought the other man was so impressive and his thing was not so impressive. So he prayed to Baba, he said, Baba, please help me. I'm, I'm so sorry, I think I failed you and I haven't really done a good job with this man. The man came to him in the morning Oh, and the, ch the challenge was if the Baba lover won, the man would put Baba's picture up in his house and perform arti to it and he would worship Baba. So all the more challenge. Anyway, what happened during the night, apparently something happened to the Kirtan Kali where he did believe in Baba and he explained to the Baba lover what had happened. He had a dream of all of the avatars saying, I, I am, I am Ram and I am Krishna and I am Jesus and I am Buddha. And now I am Mayor Baba and I'm the same one. So Baba really helped him. And, but, uh, but the thing that, and, and of course the Baba lover was completely successful and the other man became a Baba lover too and hung Baba's picture that day in his house. But the thing that always stuck with me was that thing that Mara said, because he was a Baba lover, he, he had to accept the challenge. And I thought that was one of the first things I ever heard from Mara. And I, it, I, I don't know if I've accepted the challenges in my life, but I know that that's a, that's a story she wants us to follow. Anyway, I think that's all from me for now. Thank you, Jay Baba. Thank you, Dana. I, I, I guess we yeah. all should accept the challenges. <laughs> Us Baba lovers, <laughs> uh, I am so happy to uh, to introduce Maram Seven. This group, I get your it's Prashant, Praveen, and Sureka and, and Poonam. All oh, right, yeah. Uh, these are the folks who who are um, are recipients of some of the donations that we've been uh, collecting uh, in our GoFundMe. I'm going to find the link and po post it. Uh, and are doing great work uh, with the uh, 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 working with COVID uh, sufferers and, and th that situation in at Maribad. These folks live at or near Maribad. I'll let them tell. <laughs> Jay Baba, friends. Let's Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Hello everyone, Jai Baba. 
today on uh, Mehra Mai's day, we would like to dedicate a song as we didn't have uh, any personal experience meeting her or we just, uh, you know, grew up listening to uh, Baba's and Mehra Mai's uh, beautiful uh, bonding and all. So we would like to dedicate a song that's written by Bhauji and um, lyrics says, Jo hosh mera meherba, tujh se na juda hota. Like my conscious, my conscious is not nothing other than uh, you. My conscious is within you. My conscious is you. So I, we would like to dedicate this bhajan, this song to uh, Baba and Mehra Mai. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Jai Baba.
माना के तू पर दे रहता है निहारे किन माना के तू पर दे रहता है निहारे किन मैं तुझे देख सकता तो मैं तुझे देख सकता तो तू ना निहार होता तू ना निहार होता जो होश मेरा मेरे बाप गर होश तेरा भाऊ बेहोश नहीं होता गर होश तेरा भाऊ बेहोश नहीं होता तू उसकी सदा रहता तू उसकी सदा होता वह तेरी सदा होता वह तेरी सदा होता जो हो से ना जुदा होता मैं मैं ना हुआ होता मैं मैं ना हुआ होता मैं तू ही रहा होता मैं तू ही रहा जो होश मेरा मेरे बाप जो होश मेरा मेरे बाप जो होश मेरा मेरे बाप Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Beautiful. Thank you, folks, for staying up late. I know it's a bit late for you, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank We you. love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank you. You know, Thank I don't know if you have another song. We have no hands up, right? Would you? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I also. Ben, I would like to. Oh, oh, Bill. Oh, Bill, that's right. You, you're old school. You wave that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go to Bill and maybe ask you later. Okay. I, I'd love to hear another song by them. Um, yeah, I have. I'm using my regular computer is out, my laptop. I'm using a little school age laptop. So I don't have any of the bells and whistles like to raise hands. Um, and I don't know how the sound will be because it can't filter out. Uh, but I'm going to do a song. The song I'd like to share is I think it was in 2016 uh, for Bob's birthday. A, a New Life play was performed. It had been originally a five-hour play in Arana, reduced to 90 minutes by Alan Wagner. War Parks wrote all the music. The songs for this wonderful play. And this is a song that uh, it's called Precious Beloved, Mary's New Life song that Carla de Souza sang so beautifully in the play. I wish she was here to do it. I gladly defer this slot. Um, 
Also, Carol Gunn, Gun, if she was here, I'd defer this spot to her as well. She does a lovely version. This is called Precious Beloved. And if you hear any trucks going by or sirens, well, I'm in the middle of Albany, New York. So that'll just sort of add the uh, add to the atmosphere. <clears throat> Precious beloved, though the years are flowing on, each time I look at you, your face is new. Although the old life is washed away and gone, what is the difference when I have you? Your lovely side is all that I can see. Your happiness is everything to me. Your smile delights my heart, sets me free to love you more and more. I see before me your swift and flowing stride, and this to follow is my only road. Though you are silent, I hear you speak inside. Each word a kiss that your sweet love is bestowed. Your your lovely side is all that I can see. Your happiness is everything to me. Your smile delights my heart, sets me free to love you more and more. It is for this to love you may have that I am born. Though I surrender to you, my very heart, yet even this I find is not enough. But if I merge in your arms and never part, without a distance, how to give you my love? Your lovely side is all that I can see. Your happiness is everything to me. Your smile delights my heart, sets me free to love you more and more. Your lovely side is all that I can see. Your happiness is everything to me. Your smile delights my heart, sets me free to love you more and more and more. Hey, Bob. That's wonderful. Wait, that, wow. You have to come back and sing that again. How was this, how was the sing? It, it was, uh, probably wasn't as good as it how was. How was the sound? Is it all right? I don't think it wasn't quite as good as it should have been. It was a little wavery. So we, oh, there you are. And we couldn't see you. <laughs> so. I couldn't see you? No, I, it wasn't your, I think maybe it's something about uh, your output, uh, uh, yeah. Your 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 video was on, but we couldn't see you. Yeah, so you really have to sing that beautiful song for us again sometime. Okay, another time. <laughs> I hope. Thank you, Bill. That was beautiful. You could tell it was it was it was good enough that you could say you could hear that it was beautiful. Huh? Thank you, um, Jai. I'm going to ask Mara. I'm seven to. If they'd like to sing again, just because I know it's late where they are, and uh, and then calling you, okay. So how about it, folks? Are you up for another song? Maram Seven. Yes, yes. Hello, Jay Baba. Just uh, we are uh, setting up the uh, you know uh, tempo and all. We'll uh, need two more minutes, and then okay. we'll sing. Okay. Oh, maybe Jai song. can come on. Okay. All right. All right. Jai. Okay, I hope I can do justice, J. Baba Mera. <clears throat> when they begin, the begin. If 
brings back the sound of music so tender. Bring back the night of tropical splendor. Brings back a memory evergreen. I'm with you once more under the stars, down by the shore. When orchestras play, and even the palms seem to be swaying. When they begin the beginning, live it again. It's past all endeavor, except when that tune clutches my heart. And there we are, swearing to love forever. Never to part. Moments divine, what rapture serene. The clouds came along to disperse the joys we had tasted. Now, when I hear people curse the chance that was wasted. To wear what they mean, so don't let them begin the begin. Let the love that was once a fire remain an ember. Let it sleep like the dead desire I always remember. Let them begin to begin. Let them play. Though the stars that were there before return above you. Though they whisper to me once more, darling, I love you. And we suddenly know what heaven we're in. Beautifully done. I love the guitar. Wonderful. I'm glad you sing that song. Thank you. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, now we'll hear from Mara Seven. Yasmin tells me that it's only <laughs> it's only nine fifteen in India. So we got him for a few hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jai Baba. So uh, sorry we took time because it is a uh, Madhu Sudan ji song and uh, we were lucky to have one uh, really re ready and practiced. So uh, yes, it's uh, one of our very lovely song. Uh, the lyric says, Premi meher ka hona hai to sab lutane ka vada karo. If you want to be of meher baba, then uh, promise yourself that you will give all of yourself to him. Yes, Jai Baba. There is one more para that I like to uh, describe about is Nam Lena Badi Bat Hai, Dard Dil Me To Paida Karo, Sirf Baaton Se Hota Hai Kya, Saathiyon Kuch Amal To Karo. It, it doesn't take any effort to just take his name, but it's very difficult if you, uh, you know, feel the pain of uh, what he has asked us to do. It's, you know, it's difficult to... Uh, just follow the path, but it will eventually be your uh, life once you start following. And uh, the second line, say, line says, 
just do not express uh, your feelings or just do not uh, you know give uh, i i'm sorry it, it should not be uh, that way uh, talk do not just give the talks speeches and all you should also be uh, follow you know uh, you following follow the path of the singh yes thank you baba so we'll start off with the song thank you jai baba premi me helka सब लुटाने का वादा करो प्री
अवतार महर बाबा की जय Oh, thank you all. I don't know how many of you recognize Sareka as the cooking lady. <laughs> She teaches a wonderful cooking class on every other Wednesday. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you so much. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. We all, we had a question from Yasmin, I believe that wondering if she can uh -huh. contribute to you directly uh for the for the uh mayor of the COVID effort. activity. Yeah. 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 So uh not taking much time I would like to Yeah, uh, Yasmin? Yeah. You would like to ask? <clears throat> she, she wanted to know if she could give my, give to you directly since I guess she's close uh, there in India. We didn't know how how that works. <clears throat> we can we can uh, have an email contact with oh. you we'll just uh, send an uh, our email address to the chat box and uh, okay. you can definitely write us now it's wondering whether we had to do it through baba zoom or directly to you uh, uh, directly to you, right anyway anyway it's fine there is also the link that uh, betty has just shared few uh, minutes ago and uh, for uh, any other means of transfer we can definitely have uh, you know the email conversation okay okay thanks a lot yeah. and thank, uh, you. thank you so much for all you're doing <laughs> that's great what you're doing is great thank you baba thank you baba it's all just uh, your uh, help and uh, all of your uh, you know Uh, wish to help everyone here and also baba's wish that we are able to do on ground here that uh, and we have you know almost uh, i would just uh, say in few words that uh, we have almost helped to you know for the treatment 50 uh, like around 50 plus people individuals who were covid affected mild moderate or severe and uh, by uh, by all the luck and all the support of the hospitals and doctor staff here in uh, um, Ahmednagar in different locations and in the whole district i must conclude all the, include all the districts uh, all the villages nearby villages and all and uh, they helped us a lot over call uh, there's no time limit uh, it's midnight or it's early morning they are available for us all the time over call and uh, also uh, the uh, grocery distribution that we are you know uh, trying to help those who families who are uh, covid affected or because of this pandemic those who have lost their job or uh, you know any in any manner if they are facing any problem we are helping them and uh, we are you know uh, trying to find them out through the different people through the local authorities and also uh, through trust so uh, you know we have a lot of support here those who let us know the information the individual information and uh, we try to uh, provide them the uh, groceries and also the financial assistance to those who have lost their uh, loved ones in this pandemic and uh, just a token of amount that we could uh, help them in any manner yes so these this, this all thank you all of you for your uh, lovely support and uh, this couldn't have been possible without uh, your support wonderful work really wonderful initiative just jay baba about it really thank you thank you we would like to give a very big thank you to uh, angela for uh, you know she did it and uh, she initiated it we were just sharing our thoughts with her and uh, she almost you know uh, did this whole uh, fundraising and uh, supporting um, platform for us so thank you angela i think she's not she's i think it's a work yeah, morning yeah. for her <laughs> yes yes so this month we are working on definitely yeah jay jay yes. baba to angela too wow and the zooms also and this program yes. also <laughs> yeah definitely mm. thank you jay baba jay baba thank you all thank you thank you very much jay, jay baba, baba. <laughs> i have a story a mere story i share i have shared it a dozen times but <laughs> i think sometimes those stories they're almost iconic they're part of our anyway I'll share it again mm -hmm. our our family our whole family or well, almost our my husband and my and me and three kids uh three of our five kids are young came with came to uh met we met Mara we came in 1987 we traveled there and um uh and so as 
so we were, uh, well, I was sitting on the porch with my kids and Mara was, uh, uh, was kind of trying to understand who, who was who in our family. And so she said, so, and, and so I was there with my daughter, my husband was there and we I introduced them and, and, uh, and she said, an hour, Technically, he was a foster son. He was a half brother to our kids, so uh, he uh, he was just just had just turned eleven. Let's see, August. Yeah, no, he just turned ten. So he was just young enough <laughs> that he was he got a hug from Mara, and he even got to go to tea. Um, was it? I think maybe eleven might have been the cutoff. I wish I could remember. Boy, I wish I had my more, <laughs> which I remembered <laughs> so much more. Anyway, uh, so we were all on the porch. And um, so she, uh, there's my daughter was Shireen. And then I turned and she said, and who's this? This was my, his, my son's name was Gary. And I said, oh, this is my, I said, stepson. And she, uh, she looked at me and she said, you must never say it that way. I said, and then she, that she said, she said to me, he's your, your, well, anyway, she turned to him, who was kind of spacing out, looking off the porch, and, and she said, so Gary, who's this? And she pointed to me, and he said, oh, that's my mom. It's like he didn't, <laughs> he didn't think what he didn't, so she looked at me, and boy, did I get that message. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's a wonderful kid. So, that's, uh, that's my little story of <laughs> Mara on the porch. <laughs> well, how are we doing for time or songs? Do we have other? It, you know, I guess there are plenty of people here who have not met Mara. It doesn't have to be, you know, your story of meeting Mara. It's just, um, um, just any sharing, any sharing is welcome now. I know we just had a big celebration on the weekend, uh, but I just wanted to mark the day, the special day. So, hmm. <laughs> Go here once. Go here. Oh, all right. I'm sorry, I, I missed how to uh, connect with you and I was trying to uh, go to the reactions button, but it wouldn't give me anything. But I oh, can't. Really? But anyway, oh, okay. oh, that's a problem. Oh. I've got a little techno challenge, so forgive me for that. But My anyway, My <laughs> right. Uh, well, I just wanted to share, like I did the other day. I think some of you may have already heard. Um, my first meeting with Mira was back in 1962 at the East West Gathering. And uh, that day, of course, when we had all rushed in after it had poured down with rain and we were all wet and Baba sent us inside to help have the women Mandli help us change. Um, I didn't have much interaction with Mera at that point, uh, more so with money. But then in 1965, when we had gone again, um, we had uh, Baba sent us to the veranda at Guru Prasad to meet with the women uh, Mandli. And Mira asked me to sing. And I was all of, oh, just shy of 11 years old, um, not knowing what to sing and, and feeling so shy and so intimidated. But I had to, you know, honor her wish. So I sang the uh, one song that came into my head uh, that we had learned in school, which was Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And I could only sing a few bars of that, but, <laughs> but she liked it anyway. Then subsequently, of course, I got married and I came here and uh, we had uh, our first daughter. Um, then subsequently, when I was pregnant with my son in early 1983, we had gone to uh, a visit to India. And uh, when I went into the room at, Mer at uh, Merazad to meet uh, Mera, she, you know, after realizing I was carrying a child, she did something very special, which to me is just remains with me to this day. She put her hand on my abdomen and then she turned to Baba, you know, in a, uh, the picture on the wall of him. And she started speaking to him uh, visibly. I could see her lips moving and she was either praying or, or communing with him in some way with her hand on my abdomen. And 
it was the most sublime moment. Um, and then she turned to me and she said, everything will be well, don't worry. And so subsequently we had a son and I have a picture of that event. Well, not exactly when, when she had her hand on my abdomen, but right after that. And this is the picture, if you can see it. Oh, can you see wow. Mira? Uh -huh. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so we went ahead and to have our son Darius, and um, he be is beautiful. Today, he's a father of two children himself, but uh, he had some health challenges as a child, and I always felt that this touch of Mira and her blessing him um, went such a long way to um, to keep him in Baba's love and, and uh, just keep him healthy and strong. But we, we did go through some challenging times with him when he was very, very young. And then um, two and a half years after that, we had gone again. And once again, I was uh, carrying uh, my third child, which was my daughter, Natasha. And when we went to visit Mera, and this is a picture I have of that time with my two children oh. <laughs> and Mera. So there is Darius. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's my little share with Mira. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, precious. Yes, indeed. Wow. Thank you, Goher. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. I love hearing your stories when you oh, thank oh, you. Love, love. That's so special. Yeah. Meeting with Jeff. Yeah. Yes. See, yeah. Wish I could have spent more time with. Let's see. Oh, we have two hands. Mikal. Yeah. This is such a special day. Usually I used to uh, celebrate in Israel the birthdays because this is when they came into this world and this is when they were with us. And, um, but this day is the day that is her happiness where she has joined her beloved and um, both of them are happy <laughs> to be together and where they are. Um, she really carried through these 20 years and wow, she did, did that all for Baba. So um, yeah. it's beautiful to hear these stories again and again and again. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, and never tire from them. Okay. It's so beautiful. Betty's story and Gora's story and just, just so beautiful. And um, so I, I will tell, I will share a story. Um, um, when I came uh, to Meribat and that was, um, I just heard about Baba. Um, one month before, and um, and I came because I was planning to come to India. So Etienne told me, well, um, where are you going? I said, I have no plan. And he said, well, where are you going to land? I said, I have no plan. Um, so he said, well, why don't you just go to that place? <laughs> Maribel. And uh, they are very nice people and it's very uh, um, accommodating for Westerners. And when you want to go on, because I was wanting to look for my master. So when you want to go on, then they will help you. <laughs> I said, oh yeah, that sounds good because I didn't want to be in any ashram. I didn't want to do any yoga. I didn't want to do all these things because you have that in Israel. The best teachers come here and you don't need to go anywhere else to, to do all these things, meditation, and yoga and whatever. So, and I didn't want to be connected to anything. So I took his, his, um, his uh, advice and um, he said, but you must write to them. So I, I wrote to them and I got, and at that time Israel did not have, um, did not have a relationship with uh, India. So I had a British passport, so I could go um, and make a passport, um, a visa. So that's how I landed. And I didn't know anything of anything. <laughs> so, just knew there was Baba. And I think I read Bauji's book uh, because John brought me a lot of books before I left. And I said, I'm not going to read all these. And says, oh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. So um, um, 
there I was coming to the women's porch. And um, I think that the mandali have such a huge, huge aura, energy or whatever to call it, that you just feel that field. And, 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 and I was so, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, I was so, um, I, I didn't I didn't feel like approaching I was shy I was shy so it, it makes you shy it makes you not want uh, not feeling this field which I didn't know that I was feeling uh, makes makes people just you know in awe so um, I felt very shy and I didn't I sat at the corner of the of the porch <laughs> that happened once and again <laughs> again and then someone one day just it wasn't someone, it was actually Dolly, Dolly of Jan. She actually pushed me, <laughs> pushed me on Mary. I almost fell on her. <laughs> so I would come and, 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 and say hello to her. Um, but uh, we had this, um, this um, I kept sitting on the, on, the, on the edge of the porch, <laughs> I kept being shy and, um, and we had this inner, inner connection. So one day, uh, Baba says, I want you to get a rose for Mera. I'm in Meraza. I, I'm in Meraza. And Baba says, I want you to get a rose for Mera. So um, there was a huge rose garden right uh, behind the uh, Eritreus and, and, ba, ba, and Baal's um, uh, uh, rooms a huge, huge one. And we, you would sit in that huge rose garden and you could look at Seclusion Hill and Seclusion Hill was right there and all the roses were there for Mera. So I went to that rose garden and I looked for a rose. And uh, I, I, I went from bush to bush to look for a rose that felt for me the right rose for Mera. And I, I got to this white bush and there was a beautiful white uh, rose there. So I picked it up, but I was, I was uh, shy of Mera. <laughs> so I said, no, what am I going to do? And Baba says for me to give it to Mera. So, but I was shy. So I went around the house. I went around the house where the tree, where Baba's tree, where, where he showed Mera the face and I'm going around and, and where the back, in the back, there's this um, place where they were cooking also. They had the kitchen there. So I'm going in the back to the window that is overlooking Mara's, um, Mara's room, not where the tree is, but it's overlooking Mara's bed. So I put this white rose on the windowsill and, and I left. And I was in Marazad and I don't know, things were happening and we were going and there was a lunch break, you know, we ate the sandwiches and sitting here and sitting there. And, and then someone came to me and said, Mera is saying thank you for the rose. No, no one saw me going there. No one saw me going into the garden. No one saw me going around the house. No one. But she knew that I gave her a rose. She knew that Baba asked me to give her a rose and I gave her a rose. So this is one story with Mera, which is very, very precious. And there are others, but this is one which is <laughs> these two that I was pushed on her, almost fell on her. You said that was Dolly? Dolly who pushed you? Is Dolly right? pushed me. I guess someone said, you know, she's not approaching. <laughs> you know, I used to tell people when they came to Baba, I used to tell them, there's one thing you must do. My children also came with me one day because I asked them to come before they would be drafted to the army and, you know, not be able to be grown ups and not be interested in anything. Of anything, I said, you know, I always go with you to places that are very interesting for you. Now I want you to go to a place that is very meaningful for me. So they came with me and agreed and they came with me. So um, I always tell people if they go to Maribad, I say, you know, in Maribad, um, when you come into a household, you say hello to the man of the house and the woman of the house. 
So um, that's what you have to do, whether you believe or not believe. You go into the Samadhi and say hello to Baba, whatever way you want to say hello to him. And when you leave, you say goodbye to him. So um, same thing, I think, was with Meryl, you know, and, um, and I had to approach her. And so, um, and I wasn't because I was sitting at the edge of the, of the, of the terrace. And so um, I guess uh, they helped me to come up to her and, and actually be saying hello. Mm -hmm. um, so oh. she, she was very special and very, very precious. And she's in my life and she will always be. And uh, she is just an amazing soul. Oh, thank you, Mara. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Hey, Baba, Nicole. Thank you. That was wonderful. Jeff, more from Jeff. Yay. Well, I thought about whether I should share this. Um, <clears throat> but uh, back in, in the early 70s, we, we used to go and hang out with Adi K. Rani. And Adi was very knowledgeable about God Speaks. He had studied it quite well. And in God Speaks, uh, Baba says there are certain roles that are played by the mandali around him. <clears throat> someone plays the role of Peter, someone plays the role of John, someone plays the role of Mary, you know, this type of thing. <clears throat> and he, and in God Speaks, you know, someone plays, like Baba said, Erich played the role of Peter, and Bao played the role of, of John. But, you know, so each time someone new plays that role. And so that that's all it says in God Speaks, and, and Adi was very knowledge, knew all that. But one day, Baba said to him, Mara is always the same one. Mm -hmm. he, a couple of times, he, he said, Baba told him, Mara is always the same one, meaning that <clears throat> she's here you might say eternally. And Mara had said to uh, someone who told me that Mara said that she had always been a woman. You know, unlike the rest of us that are get bandied around between the genders, so to speak. <laughs> but um, so I, I mean, I myself felt that I did. I had never met anyone quite like Mara. I mean, this is like she came from heaven down. <clears throat> and you know, Erich was one of the one most, you know, whatever greatest beings I've met. But he kind of from came from the muck up, you might say. But Mara, <clears throat> I I know when I would be with her, it's like if you inwardly embrace Mara, it's almost like I, I kind of felt like this was a a large uh, house with all these windows. And you'd go into this house and there would be no internal walls. You could go right through to the other side. No vortex of an ego in there. It was all spacious, you know. And so anyway, I, I mean, I asked Monty if, Monty had, if Bob had ever said this to her, but he hadn't. But, but Adi said he got it directly from Bob that Mara is always the same one. So it's not like we will we will see her again. She was, you know, Radha, Sita. We never know what Mary it was, but uh, Baba's uh, I know, eternal counterpart. So she is always here when Baba comes, that same one. Now, huh? that's, people might, uh, I mean, that's, that's what Adi said and you can take it however you want, but that's uh, this is how I took it. Yeah, Jay Baba. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting to think about. Yeah, she's here just for him, really. Yeah, Nicole. I have something to say. This is oh, yeah, actually let the stream talk and then me. Right. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Speak yes, up. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a story to tell you about Mera. I I think I have said it before, but you know, not that big of an audience. So once I went to India and I was in the morning, you know, going to Baba's tomb, and then after you go to Mera's tomb. When I went to Mera's tomb, then I know Baba always said she's eternal. So I bowed down and I talked to her and I was doubt, you know, if she's eternal or not. Anyway, that day we went to Merazat, you know, after everything was done, breakfast, everything. Then I went to Merazat, you know, it was a big, big crowd. Between all this crowd, somebody come that happened to be Casey, I didn't know, uh, hold my hand and pull me uh, between all these people to Mera's room. And she told me, do you see this is Mera's bed? And also this is Mera's uh, picture. And we always put a beautiful vase of flower, um, you know, um, dedicate to her. And this morning around that early that I was talking to Mera, she said, I saw your image in Mera's eyes. Uh-huh. That was the time that I was talking to Mera. Are you eternal or not? Then she said, I saw your image in her eyes. So that was an indication, you know, that Mera is always here with us. <laughs> Thank you, J Baba. Finish. <laughs> 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 Nasreen, you saw Baba's image in Mera's eyes. Is that is that what she, she saw? She saw my she saw image. Your oh wow! In Mera. Oh. oh oh my! <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. goodness! Yes. <laughs> oh wow! Well, you know. Baba said, you know, indirectly that, you know, Mera is here always, is eternal, because that was my question. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Thank you, Nasreen. Oh. You're welcome. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. Jay Baba, Jay Baba. Baba. And uh, Mikal now? Nasreen, that was beautiful, very beautiful, <laughs> very beautifully told. Um, yeah, I just remembered that um, we have Priya here, and Priya has opened the uh, Mara's Tea. Uh, so every other Tuesday, we meet in Zoom and Mara's Tea, and it is such a beautiful place that Priya has opened, such a beautiful heart place, and Mara is so much there. And, and it's so precious. So I just wanted to thank Priya, uh, thank, um, thank uh, Angela for this Zoom, thank Baba <laughs> for this tavern, and uh, thank uh, Priya for bringing Mera uh, every other week. And it's so, so, so precious. So thank you. That's all I wanted to say. That's true, Priya. Even, even oh, though you Baba. had not. To share with all of us. He promptly inquired that we open that way. Truly and only grateful to Mama and Mara. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. You, you, yes, you are the one, Priya, who kind of brought, somehow you brought Mara's presence more strongly into our group by, by with this lovely tea idea. It was a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. So now, Jeff. <clears throat> One short thing that kind of bears this out, what uh, Nasreen had said too. Uh, there was one woman her here in America, her name was Maureen Stamp, and she had grown up, she was a Native American, you know, uh, Cherokee. <clears throat> she had a very difficult life, but she, she was a Catholic, she would kind of grew up Catholic, and she took such comfort and turn, you know, turned to uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, through all of her childhood, 
Then she got married, had four kids, but then that fell apart. So she was struggling with four kids and but she would turn to to Mary for uh, who all of this and uh, and then years later she heard of Bamba and she was there in Atlanta and she came to India <clears throat> and one day Mara was there uh, it, Mary used to give people little tours around the garden the spices and the you know vegetables I, I think it was more spices and uh, and she was walking around, just she and Mara. And at one point, Mara was holding an umbrella to be out of the shade. She looked at, at Maureen and said, I've always been helping you. And, and she felt this was the Mary that mm -hmm. had been helping her all through her life. <clears throat> so that, that's kind of, uh, I'm, we we don't necessarily know what Mary, Mary it is, but <laughs> but uh, that was she, and and she felt this is this is the one and she's here now. Just Mara came out of Mara. That's very unusual for Mara to say such things, but there it was. Oh, I'm glad you I'm glad you told that story. I mean, I'm, yeah, I remember it. Thank you, Jeff. Paula. Yeah, hi, Jay Baba. Um, sorry, Baba woke me up right at 7.30, so I'm not presentable. <laughs> um, I heard that story too, Jeff, and the words that I heard that Mara said to her were, when you pray to Mary, it was I who heard you. Um, this was, I didn't know whether to read this or not, but anyway. I'm going to give it a go. Around Easter time, I mean, I was thinking about Mary and I, you know, in Catholic tradition, traditions, it's always, you know, attributed to the Blessed Mother. So this was something that I wrote. So I've got two things. Um, but anyway, it was Blessed Mother, you took all, because Mary had a job that we, you know, I think about Mary and it's immense. This is, it's just immense and infinite and personal at the same time, like Baba. Blessed mother, you took all the pain of all the mothers, all the feelings lost into your pieta, into your compassionate, infinite being as God's mother. When I saw the image of you holding your dead son, you pierced my heart. Okay, I can do this. You carry every feeling of every mother's loss, every person's loss. You make it possible to survive. Your son is the answer. For 20 years, Mara, our mother, in her divine role in illusion, carried every particle of grief in illusion. Eventually, after withstanding immeasurable pain of loss, Mara filtered and transcended all our pain for us. She shattered infinite pain of loss into infinite glory. Mara, our mother, our truest, most glorious, beautiful mother, most beloved of beloved God, Baba. E even the word mother or queen pales beside you. And this morning I realized something. I tried to um, put a word to this and I never could until this morning. But when I was on Mary's veranda, she did something so sweet. She was playing with my scarf and she said, how beautiful, how beautiful. And I could never describe the feeling of Mara when she did that until this morning. And it was like, she was the personification of delight. She was, she was just delight. You know, it was like, she was, I felt how happy she was. And um, that was in 1986. And it felt like, uh, I, I don't, I can't say any more about that because I couldn't even put a word to it before now because the lightness of her being was just pure delight. So anyway, so that's a couple of things that I've got. Paula, can I ask you to read that 
is it a poem or I had to step away for a minute. Could you read that again? Would you yeah. Mind? Okay, so it started with the Blessed Mother. Blessed Mother, you took all the pain of all the mothers, all the feelings lost into your pieta, into your compassionate, infinite being as God's mother. When I saw the image of you holding your dead son, you pierced my heart. You carry every feeling of every mother's loss, every person's loss. You make it possible to survive. Your son is the answer. For 20 years, Mara, our mother, in her divine role in illusion, carried every particle of grief in illusion. Eventually, after we were standing in measurable pain of loss, Mara filtered and transcended all our pain for us. She shattered infinite pain of loss into infinite glory. Mara, our mother, our truest, most glorious, beautiful mother, most beloved of God, of beloved God, Baba, even the word mother or queen pales beside you. Oh, Jay Baba. Beautiful. Thank you, Paula. That was so special. Thank you. Jay Baba. I love that image of the Pieta. Oh, thank you, everybody. You know, I just got a note from uh, uh, Prashant, uh, the Mar Maran segment, from Maran 70. He said, I'm sorry we had to leave. We attended our Amanagar Center members last night and just got the word that uh, oh, the fellow they attended had gone to Baba. So they're really working in the trenches. He didn't say who it was. It's Praveen. Um, sent the message. Thank you, Betty, for beautiful um, program and important that it was on this day. For me, it is important. It is more more meaningful for me that it was on this day. And thank you for doing that and for uh, hosting it so beautifully. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's so much love around Mara. We, two days was just fine. It was full. They were both full. In fact, we happened to have quite a slot of time, empty time after this. So I'm going to just run the 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 uh, the video of Sunday's meeting if anybody wants to watch it or or just you know a, as you wish. It'll just go on. Yeah. <sighs> Can we say the beloved prayer for Mary? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Beloved God, you can all say it, it'll God. sound. Anyway. And Mara, and help us all to, to love, love you more, more and more and more and more, and, more, and, more, and, more, and, more, and still yet more, more, more till we become worthy become of union more, with you both. And help us all more, to hold us fast to Baba Dharma till the very end. Thank you, Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Jay Baba. Thank you, Jay Mayor Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Baba. All right. So I'm going to set up that screen and then, yeah. And bid adieu. Love, love, love to everybody. Jay Baba. Thank you for coming. With short notice, I know. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Let me. All right. All right, I'm going to start sharing screen. You can just leave as you as you wish and need to. All right, Jay Baba.
Whenever I gaze at the moon in the sky, I think of dear Mary with the past in her eyes, reliving the days she spent by the side of Baba, her love and her life. This was never a worldly romance, not what one might assume. At a glance, but pure and divine as an angel dance between hearts entwined and entranced. She was the moon, sharing his light. She lit up the path in the dark of the night. She was the chosen beloved one. She was the one. Sight. When he looked at her, he shone ever more bright. The sun lit the day and the moon lit the night as she reflected his light. She was the heart of his infinite plan. She wore the rings of the beautiful hand, the ocean of love spilled. So roses could bloom in the sand. She was the moon, sharing his light. She lit up the path in the dark of the night. She was the chosen beloved one. She was the wondrous moon, reflecting the glorious sun.
bear up in what manner do you love him your hold on to him is so strong we who have just come to know him it is for this love that we long for of all of his lovers in creation it seems that he's closest to you so Mara won't you tell us how you love him so that we might love him that way too well he came as if an angel sent from heaven but we found it rather odd to learn that this angel sent from heaven himself had turned out to be God and a simple heart breaks when one thinks of mistakes made in a moment so weak and so faced with this task we now come to ask help towards this goal that we see so tell us Mara in what manner do you love him and what makes your love so pure that there is no hardship or suffering for him that you would not endure we who have never been with him still long for a love so true so Mara won't you tell us how you love him so that we might love him that way too There's a mist on the field in the morning But the sun comes to burn it all off Just as the mist of our clouded imaginations Is removed by the warmth of his love And we see all around His love shining down direct from the heavens above and we grow close but yet as close as we get we never can get close enough so tell us Mara in what manner do you love him though really it's not hard to tell for we see it when you look at his picture Your eyes seem to show us so well And though it might be rude of us asking Really what else could we do? For Mara, if we knew how you love him Then we I love him that way too.